Hello guys, long time no see in this type of video formatting. It's been such a long time since I've like actually just sat down in front of the camera like this and filmed a sit down video. I've been filming so many vlog style videos that this, this feels weird, this feels different, but hello. Welcome to today's video. I'm so excited to start the like, I love the random like new year-ness that goes around booktube. I don't know if anybody else does. Like the yearly wrap-ups, the best books of 2022, what I'm gonna read in 2023, my most anticipated reads, blah, 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 like all of that stuff. I don't know why I eat it up. I love it so much. I love like when the new year comes on booktube and there's like so much different content coming out. Here I am to add to that madness that's got probably going on on your YouTube homepage. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys what my most anticipated reads are for 2023. Now these are not 2023 releases. I've already done that video. If you guys want to see that video, it is up already. These are just the books that I have on my TBR, on my radar, that I'm the most excited or just most looking forward to read in 2023 to kind of like see what my thoughts are. These may be books that I've seen. These may be books that are popular. These may be books that have been on my radar for a while that I am just excited to see what my thoughts are. These are or not in any way. I don't really know if these will be a five-star reads. I don't think that a good majority of these will be five-star reads. It's just more of like a, I want to see what my opinion is on these books. So I'm very excited about it. So that's what we're doing today. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's just talk about all of the books that I am the most excited to read in 2023. And I know that you guys are probably going to find a few books from today's video to add to your never-ending TBR pile. And you guys can buy those with the help of today's sponsor, which is topcashback.com. Okay, hello guys. Let's talk about topcashback.com. So I've talked about them before on my channel. You guys know that I love them because who doesn't love saving money? I know I know, I do personally because I spend a lot of it. I would love to save some of it too. With it being 2023, we all have books on our radar. You know, new year, new books. Maybe I'm the only person that lives by that, but you can too. If you're planning on treating yourself to some new books for this new year, you guys should definitely be using topcashback.com. There are over 7,000 retailers on topcashback.com that you guys can shop through and they offer 100% commissions back to members. And because of this, they are constantly featuring higher rates than the competitors. So let's go on topcashback and let's check out what they have going on for the new year because the offers are constantly changing all the time. And I'm gonna show you guys like how you can check what offers are available right now. So like right now, Bloomingdale's, there's 10% cash back, it's their after Christmas sale. There are so many different companies like this. There's Sephora, Walgreens, Ulta, Estee Lauder, Clinique, like so many different companies that you guys can choose from. For example, I buy a lot of my books on Target or through Target. I either go to Target or buy them online. And right now there is a 3.6% cash back through Target. So if I wanted to buy some books off Target, I would literally just click this right here. I would press get cash back now and then all you have to do is just go to Target's website, make your purchase, and the money, it takes about seven days on average to go to your account. So like I said, you just go to Target, you enter your order, and then it'll, the money will be on top cash back. So when I go to my account overview, you can see how much money I have saved and like what I have and all of my earnings right here. And that's where it'll pop up. It takes about seven days on average for those to pop up, but there are so many different brands and deals. Like I said, there's over 7,000 different companies that you guys can shop from. Right now, Top Cash Back is offering for you guys a no minimum payout and a $10 Top Cash Back sign up bonus. Plus you guys are getting cash back upon spending your first $25. That is something that interests you guys. Definitely go down in the description and join at topcashback.com to start earning money back on the things that you are buying in the new year. If anyone's wanting to save money as their new year resolutions, this is a great way to start. So thank you so much to topcashback.com for sponsoring today's video. Let's get into my most anticipated rates for 2023. So, oh, we know Charlie's, yep. Good thing I'm not sitting in my chair though. She's just, this is where she's at. If anyone's wondering, so I'm going to separate these into separate categories by genre. So the first one that we're going to do is basically just like my generalized fiction. These are just your fiction books. So that's what I categorize them as. I don't know like what their actual 
category would be but these are just kind of like books that are maybe historical fiction fiction in any way that aren't necessarily like romance fantasy or any of that first of all i have tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow or tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow i don't know if anyone else has been seeing this I, I think it may have been a book of the month pick in a previous month but also whenever i go to my local barnes noble it's always there right when i walk in i always see this book so i was pretty intrigued the other day and i opened up the cover and i thought that it sounded pretty interesting it is basically a story about these two people and they kind of like have a past with each other and they ultimately create this like video game reality type of sense thing. It's very reminiscent of Ready Player One. And this story basically follows them, I think, within the span of about 30 years in, like, their fame with this big video game, like, type of thing that they made and what their lives kind of come down to and, like, dealing with all of the things that come with riches and fame. That just seemed so interesting to me. The cover always caught my eye and the synopsis of it sounded very interesting. So that is definitely a book that I'm very, very excited to read. Next up, this is a book that I wanted to just give a second chance. I don't know why I said this in my 2021 wrap up. I read this book originally in 2021 and I- According to the Associated Press, Democrat Joe Biden was declared the winner over incumbent Republican Donald Trump in the US presidential election. For more information about the elections, try asking what's my election update? Okay, we're gonna act like that didn't happen and that AI isn't taking over my life. I originally read this book in 2021 and I was not a fan of it and I've said that I'm going, I'm no longer going to read their books, right? I was like, yeah, no, I'm not reading their books anymore. This just isn't for me and I still kind of believe that but I just wanted one last time because so many people love this book and I just want to give it a 100% fair shot and that is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I went and bought this the other day. For some reason I was like maybe it's because I was reading it and listening to the audiobook. Maybe it's because I listened to the audiobook that this book didn't fully grasp for me and I didn't love it. I don't think this is going to be a five star. I don't know though because reading tastes change so drastically. Like books that I absolutely loved when I was like 17, 18, now I'm almost 20. Like I look back at those and I'm like, oh my God, ew, no. So like book tastes change and I just kind of wanted to give this a second shot for some reason. The story of normal people is basically just kind of one of those snippets of life. You are just completely learning about two characters and their life and their story and their relationship together. I really wanted to give this book a second shot in 2023, so that's what we're gonna do. Funny enough, I have been getting recommended a lot of Frederick Bachman's books. I bought A Man Called Obey a few months ago, and I still haven't read it yet, and I think I saw a trailer that it's either gonna be a TV show or a movie that's about to come out. They named it a different name, though, like A Man Called Something, or I don't know, the title's a little bit different, which irks me for some reason. Well, I know why. It's, it irks me because why wouldn't you just keep the name? I've heard that it is a very, very heartwarming story. It is basically about Obe and he is the grumpiest man you will ever meet. And then this family basically moves next door and they're his new neighbor and they are just like completely like it's like a madhouse. It's like oh my gosh and it's kind of disturbing his life as he knows it. Which then starts this like friendship between them as a neighbor. It says community, unlikely friendships, a tale of unkempt cats. Very cute, very heartwarming and I cannot wait to read it. Next we have Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Now this is a YA book which I know but I am putting it in with the fiction because it does say that it follows Aristotle and Dante. It's just kind of like a tale of friendship and kind of the relationship that grows there. I don't know too much about this book but I know that th when I first got onto book talk this book was everywhere and I know very very little about it and it is something that is very unknownst to me and I just like want to know. I want to know what it's about. I want to read it. I've heard that it is very beautiful. It's so many people's favorite book. I think the last book that we have in this category is Circe or Circe. I read the Song of Achilles back in 2021 and I didn't love it. A lot of other people did but I will say that I, that is another book that I do want to re read in 2023 because I just I want to give it another shot. Like I don't know there's something in me that I'm like 
I've been seeing quotes and stuff on Pinterest lately and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if my palette has been cleansed and if this book is like a book that I would be in love with. So I want to retry it. But first I want to read her other book, which is Circe. And I actually have read like a little bit of this. I got through like a little bit of this back when I used Libby quite frequently to read my books in 2021. And this was one of the books I was reading, but then I ended up swapping it out for another book and just like never picked it up again. It got lost in the whole expanse of, you know, the void of books that I've started and then never finished. I don't know why I just have been thinking about this book so much lately. So I decided to pick it up to be like, you know what? It's on my shelf. I'm going to read it. It's basically kind of like a retelling of Circe. I have absolutely zero knowledge of any Greek mythology and I feel like that's fun for me to kind of like go into it. But then I feel like it's a double-edged sword because I feel like I'm always like, oh, I didn't really enjoy this book that much because like I didn't really understand the Greek mythology and I feel like that's important. But then again, I have heard these books to be described as like, even if you don't know the mythology around it, you can still go into it and enjoy it. So... I'm really, I'm really dependent on that. Those are all of the basic, like, generalized fiction, all over fiction books that I have. And so next, we are going to be talking about my romance books that I have on my radar because I feel like there are quite a lot of those. First of all, I have some that I don't have physical copies of. So we have Say You Swear. This is a book that I have just been getting recommended to me, like, over and over and over again. And I've been seeing so much specifically on my bookstagram. I was like, okay, we're going to try it. We're going to see what this is about. And it is basically a college romance, and it is described in its synopsis as this on Goodreads. For years, I've dreamt of what college life could bring, and while some things changed, there was always one constant. It didn't matter how wild I allowed my imagination to run, it always led me to the same place and the end. I cannot read. It led me to him. My future was clear, and he was it. Until suddenly, he wasn't. Now I'm a shell of who I was, on a path too blurry to follow, and I see no way out, no way up. They say first loves last forever, and that's exactly what I'm afraid of. So it seems like a pretty interesting read. You don't really get, I feel, much of a synopsis from that, which I like. Sometimes I read synopsis because I'm like, okay, let me see. Like, it's recommended I see a lot. I want to see what this book is about, just even a little snippet. And sometimes it gives away too much, but I feel like that one was a pretty good one. I feel like it didn't give away too much, so that's actually one of the romances that are like at the top. Next, I have The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. Her book, Better Than the Movies, took like the book community by storm in 2023. Nope. 2023 has not even happened yet. In 2022, Better Than the Movies took the book community by storm. I really liked it and I thought that her writing was really good. Like it was something that I felt like was bubbly and fresh and so easy to read and so enjoyable. She has a new book, The Do Over. A teen girl has the worst Valentine's Day ever only to relive it over and over again. So it's basically like Groundhog's Day but meet Valentine's Day. After living through a dumpster fire of Valentine's Day, Emily Hornby escapes to her grandmother's house for some comfort and consolation. She passes out on the couch but when she wakes up she's back home in her own bed and it's valentine's day all over again and the next day another nightmare valentine's day emily is stuck in some sort of time loop nightmare that she can't wake up from as she re-watches her boyfriend josh cheat on her day after day in addition to josh's reoccurring infidelity emily can't get away from the enigmatic nick who keeps running into sometimes literally in unfortunate ways how many days can one girl passively watch her life go up in flames and when something good starts to come out of these terrible days what happens when the universe stops doing the do-over and this is a book that I specifically know that I'm going to read in February since it is literally about Valentine's Day and reliving the same Valentine's Day over and over I am very excited to read it and like I said I really really enjoyed Lynn Painter's writing in better than the movies I feel like it is the perfect scope that it feels like reading a teen rom-com but like a good one romances that I have the physical copies of first of all we have second first impressions by Sally Thorne this is one that I feel like it's just gonna be a nice easy read in between like a palette cleanser in between fantasy books. I feel like sometimes I like picking up books like this in between those reads because they're very easy, not a lot of brain power involved. I really, really, really loved Sally Thorne's other two books, which were 99% Mine and The Hating Game. I was like a ride or die for The Hating Game back when it was like having its hype. I feel like since I liked those other two books and I liked her writing that I will like this one and it seems more of like a toned down scope kind of romance. So basically this is about Ruthie 
and she works at this retirement villa and she kind of has her little routine and she's got her life going on and then she meets Teddy who is the son of the owner and some stuff happens with them and the story goes on from there and it is definitely like opposites attract I don't know if it's really a grumpy sunshine it's something like that I feel like it's going to be just such a cute easy read and I'm very very excited next we have ghosted now I started this book back in September I feel like I was actually 40 like percentish through this book like I was a pretty good chunk of the way through this but in September I was in one of the like worst book slumps thus far not wanting to read it all not wanting to pick up any book but I was really really enjoying this book but it was just like I don't feel like reading but I'm really enjoying this book but like the thought of reading right now is just taking me out so I never picked this book back up because it just kind of got lost in the void and it is a book that I'm really excited to finish. I feel like this could be a high four stars or maybe even a five. So I'm very excited. This is basically about a young actor and he is like very popular because he plays this superhero. And he has this past that no one knows about because he left behind his love and she had a daughter that she never told him about. You're kind of following their story, kind of like a second chance romance vibe and you are seeing these letters from the past and kind of like these entries from the past and it's like a past and present type of thing and I was really really enjoying it up to the point where I stopped reading so I'm excited to pick this back up and then we have by a thread by Lucy score I am very interested to read more of Lucy score I feel like I've been saying this for months that I've bought other Lucy score book and after I read things when I ever got over like I loved that book like it had me as much of a chokehold as it did all of booktube and book talk and I just haven't read any more of them and I feel like I really want to read by a thread especially while I'm waiting from things we hide from the light like it's kind of giving me that same vibe since they're both pink but this one is about a grumpy boss and she basically so you have Dominic he is the woman who owns the company he's her son and he works there as well and basically him and Allie don't get along okay Allie just started working for his mom and he's like oh god we do not get along so it's kind of just like a grumpy sunshine I don't know they work for like a clothing store or something is what I'm getting from these hangers I don't know too much about it but it is just a romance that I'm excited to read from Lucy score next this is so random like so random but I I really want to read to love Jason Thorne because I was in this like same exact type of video thing last year where I said like books I want to read in 2022 or something like that and I said that I wanted to read this book and I like just recently a few months ago bought it to be like you know what destiny you should read it because you said you wanted to read it in 2022 and then I just never picked it up but it is just a book that I feel like I was so intrigued by at the end of 2021 and like the beginning of 2022 I feel like so many people were talking about this book that I was like okay yeah I do I really want to read that and it's I still have that fascination with it it's basically about Olive and she was in love with her brother's best friend all growing up wait or maybe she was just her best friend I don't know I thought that it was like her brother's best friend and she had a crush on him their whole entire time growing up where she basically essentially writes a book and writes the main character to be him so it's basically kind of like writing their love story like what she wishes their love story would have been and he is an up-and-coming actor and he gets casted as the main guy and she is the author so she's like always there and he is playing out their love story that she wanted it to be. I'm happy to see if I will like this or not. Next, some of you may be like, what? But it is just that I had randomly bought the third book, didn't buy the second one and I'm like, okay, I have the first and third book. I'm going to have to get the second book or at least read the second book because I should like read these books if I had them, you know? That is the rest of the Magnolia Parks. <laughs> now, like I said, I have the first book, which I read in 2022. This is The Long Way Home, which is the third book. I don't know if there's going to be any more, but this is the third book because this is about like the same couple that was in the first book. So I thought like you could just kind of read those, but I have since been yelled at multiple on multiple occasions saying that I need to read Daisy Hates. Daisy Hades first. So that's the second book. So in 2023, I do want to read them. I am going to go in with a fair chance. And it, some of you may be like, well, why are you even wasting your time with a series that like you already know that you don't like? And like I said, I have the books bought. So I might as well read them. I feel like it's just the drive of curiosity. I have a video plan for this. Be looking out for that. I bought this duology, not necessarily knowing what I was getting myself into. Like a lot of people were just kind of talking about it. And a downfall of me is that like in the book community, something is talked about a lot. I'm buying it no matter what. This was one of them. And I have since heard of the things that take place in this book. So I feel like it will be a fun thing to read for a video. So be looking forward to that in the near future. And that is Haunting Adeline. 
haunting and hunting Adeline. I literally, it's the sheer curiosity and like the book talks that I've seen, like talking about things that take place in this book. I have to see that written down on paper. I have to see how that translates on paper, you know, because it's always different from like how you make book talks about it or how I even talk about it on a YouTube video. It's always different when you read it on paper. And I feel like it would be a fun video for us to do. This is basically about a guy. What is his name? <laughs> I don't know. And he basically stalks her or something. I don't really know the whole scope of this. Says the manipulator and the shadow. I didn't mean to fall in love, but now that I have, I can't stay away. I'm mesmerized by her smile, by her eyes, and the way she moves. I'll keep watching and waiting until I can make her mine. And once she is, I'll never let her go, not even when she begs me to. And then we have the things we leave unfinished because this also kind of took book talk by storm and it kind of gave me the vibes of like something that like a grandma would read and not in a bad way. It is about 28 year old Georgia and she just, you know, got done in a brutal divorce. So she's going through her great grandmother's estate in Colorado and she finds face to face with Noah Harrison, the best selling author of a million books where the cover is always people nearly kissing. <laughs> We all love that. They basically go through her great grandma's manuscript the letters that she sends to a World War II pilot, her real life romance. I don't really know a lot about this. Can you tell? I don't know, but I'm excited because so many people have talked about it. Those are all of the romances. So the very final category that I have are my fantasy books that I am going to read in 2023 that I'm very anticipated reads for me. First of all, we're gonna go through the ones that I don't have physical copies of. So first of all, yes guys, I am doing it. I will be reading the Cruel Prince trilogy. I read the Cruel Prince back in 2021 for like my first book video I've ever made on this channel. Didn't like it at all. To be fair with that book, I had never once read a fantasy book in my life. And I also like wasn't at a point in my life where I even wanted to read fantasy. Like fantasy was not something that interested me at all. Like I was literally like, yeah, no, like fantasy's not for me. So I kind of went in with that mindset. I don't like fantasy. I don't understand it. I kind of don't even want to be reading this book right now, but I'm doing it for the video. I felt like that was a little unfair. I decided that in 2023, I will be reading the Cruel Prince trilogy again, even though I only read the first book. And when I think back on the first book, the first book wasn't bad. Now, like who I am now, I was like, you know, that was actually like pretty good. But like who I was back then didn't like it. So I'm very interested to see what my thoughts will be on the Cruel Prince trilogy. And then we have the Crave series that I know absolutely zilch, zero, nothing, nada about. And I want to keep it that way because there are some series that I want to do videos on and that is one of them as well as the Cruel Prince trilogy. You can look out for videos for those whenever I get to them. And then I have the Blood and Ash series, which I, again, I read from Blood and Ash in 2021. Never picked up a single other book. Not because I was like, uh, yeah, no, I don't like this. But just because back then again, I don't really love fantasy and like I liked the romance aspect of it, but like the fantasy was just like, yeah, no, I don't think I could do this. But who I am now where I am reading and kind of into a lot of fantasy books, I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I could love the Blood and Ash series. I think one of my most anticipated reads of the year is to read the Throne of Glass series. I actually read Throne of Glass, which you guys will hear about in my 2022. 2022 wrap-up. That will be up in a few days. I am so excited and I was going to go out and buy the rest of the books. I was like, I'm about to go to Barnes & Noble, buy the rest of them. When I saw that the new covers are coming out in February, I believe, and I was like, you know what? I love these new covers. I am not going to buy the old covers when these new covers are magnificent like i love the new covers love them so much i feel like i just love looking at them you know what i'm gonna have some self-control which has been hard for me because i've thought about this like for days and days and days the thought hasn't left my mind to just like buy the old covers and then buy the new covers but like so wasteful. Why are we wasting that money, Destiny? I am waiting until the new covers come out to finish that series, which I will honestly probably literally just sit down and finish that series once those new covers come out from front to back in like a few days. Not read anything else because I'm very, very intrigued and I really like Throne of Glass. Now we're going to talk about the physical books that I have. So first of all, since we were talking about Throne of Glass, House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. This is the second book in the Crescent City series. I have since 
learned. I thought that it was just a duology. I feel like I've heard through the grapevine that there's gonna be a third book. Not too sure. I am definitely gonna be reading this in January, so you guys can look forward to me reading that in January. I will probably honestly make a little reading vlog reel over on my bookstagram, so. Follow me on my bookstagram if you want to see some content in the new year. I'm very excited because I rated Crescent City House of Blood, House of Earth and Blood, a four stars because was it very hard? The world building, that was the most challenging world building I've ever read before. And was it hard to kind of get into? Yes. But I started loving the story as it was unraveling and especially like the last like 200 pages. I loved it. I rated it like a 4.25, four and a half stars. I really, really liked it. Then I watched uh, Kari Can Read and I watched her kind of like break down on that book. And after I kind of pulled together like some of the other things, understood them properly, I was like, wow, I did really like that. I'm really looking forward to this. Also, people have told me that to continue on with the Akhtar series, something that happens in this book is very important for the remaining books in the Actar series like something it's a shift or something with the Actar series I don't know because I haven't read this book yet and I honestly still probably won't know after I read it next we have the infernal devices I'm pretty sure there's three books in the infernal devices I have heard that people absolutely love this trilogy and that's really my thoughts about that and then these next two books go very much hand in hand so first of all we have Carval I want to read another book so bad but I have since learned that it is heavily, heavily, heavily recommended to read the Carval trilogy before you read this other book that I'm going to show you guys. I really want to force myself to do it. Please, in the comments, convince me to read this because every time that I've looked at this and been like, you know what? I think I'm going to read you today. I talk myself out of it every single time. I don't know why. What if there's this fantastic world awaiting me that like I haven't even been able to learn yet because I just won't pick up and open this book? Please, please tell me that you guys like this. The final book that we have for today's video is Once Upon a Broken Heart. This book is absolutely beautiful, but I will say that I will be ordering the other UK covers because those are absolutely magnificent and I am in love with those and they are paperbacks. But anyway, this and Caraval, yeah, they go hand in hand. They basically like take place in the same universe type of thing. It's kind of like how the Shadow and Bone trilogy was with the Six of Crows duology where people were like, you don't have to read this before. You can just like read this. But like a lot of people are like, you should really read the trilogy first first though before you get into this because it does have a lot of spoilers for Carval and if you like this and end up wanting to read Carval like you're spoiling stuff for yourself and like once you tell me that I have to read this first it doesn't matter if you look at me and say Destiny you know what don't read Carval first just read Once Upon a Broken Heart I can't do it I literally cannot there is something in my brain that will not allow me to I do want to read both of these books very bad but I'm gonna have to get through three of these first. So those are all of the books that are highly, highly anticipated. I wanted to kind of like set them apart from the 2023 releases that I'm excited for. Obviously those are also anticipated reads, but like those are anticipated releases. There's absolutely no guarantee that those will be read in 2023, but these we're going to check back at the end of 2023. We're going to check back a year from now and see how many I read or if I read all of these and that shall be interesting. So I feel like this is a pretty good amount that I could most certainly definitely get through. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff that you guys know how to do. Happy New Year, all of you guys, because I'm pretty sure my next upload is going to be my 2022 wrap up, which is going to be on January 1st. So look forward to that. Happy New Year, you guys. Thank you guys so much for making 2022 an absolutely amazing year for me. This year genuinely was like one of the huge turning points in my life. I feel like it was the first big turning point in my life and it was 100% because of you guys. I appreciate you guys literally so much all day, every day when you guys make posts, TikToks, anything and tag me in things. Like it warms my heart and I cry all the time because it is so freaking amazing. So I want to thank you guys from the bottom bottom to the top of my heart. And thank you again to topcashback.com for sponsoring today's video. With that being said, I will see you guys when I see ya. Peace.